Hey everyone, Justin here. Thanks for joining me once again. And now we are about to switch gears to the Undertaker's Road WrestleMania from SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. A little excited here. Um, not sure how people feel about this one. This is definitely a lot different than the Jericho one. Uh, maybe it's polarizing. Maybe when you played this originally you were a kid and now you're an adult so you feel a little bit different about it. But, uh, you know, I think The Undertaker himself is pretty timeless. So, uh, and you can see from this WWE produced video package that really captures him and uh, the mystique of The Undertaker. And, you know, that's what I went for as well, even though maybe it gets a little hokey later on. Um, I won't say too much yet in case you've never seen this storyline. But uh, you see him doing big things to big guys. There was Mark Henry there. There was... Uh, Festus? Was that Festus? Yeah. <laughs> Remember those guys? The uh, Edge, the Edgeheads? Looking like twins. Was that Hawkins and Ryder? Alright, and then we transition into uh, in game. Of course, that's not Undertaker talking. Um, I was told when I was making the story that. That the Undertaker did not want to do voiceover. Um, he was unhappy with how he was portrayed in years past, so I did whatever I could to not give him any lines of voiceover. And I guess it, you know, it helps the mystique of the character as well. Anyway, so we've also switched brands. We're now on SmackDown as opposed to uh, Raw, and we have a new commentary team as well. A new. New Arena, we're in Los Angeles, which is where I lived for many years, which is where I lived while I was at THQ making these games. And I did not remember that Michael Cole had this weird porn mustache. So this was, uh, you know, coaches had a really weird kind of career path with WWE and then going to ESPN and back to WWE and back to ESPN. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, Undertaker is not like any other superstar, so his storyline has to be a little bit different. But really, when I'm looking for Road to WrestleMania storylines to capture the essence of every character, Undertaker is pretty much the most original, unique character on the roster. So he's kind of tailor-made for Road WrestleMania. Once again, we're starting you with a pretty typical singles match. Uh, in a way, this is kind of designed to get you used to the playing as this character if you haven't played as this character before. Oh, what an underhanded move! And the back rake. Two. And that's a stiff kick. And I hadn't played as The Undertaker in for a while, so I'm getting used to the controls. Sure, and his moveset is different. Oh, and I, I whiffed that kick. Oh, well. And that's what you've got to do if you want to win this match. You have to use the ringside environment to your advantage. So this is quite a different look for Santino than we remember. I mean, he's got almost like volleyball knee pads and the mohawk. He hits the high-risk moves. Quite honestly, I don't think Santino has a prayer in this matchup. He's taking a little time to give his opponent a piece of his mind. Uh, and once again, my, my move kind of uh, bypassed the, oh my, the exclusive commentary that, that I wrote incredible. for this match. Santino will be using his head no here. Fear on Oops. The face of this superstar. Uh, I'm not going to blame my controller again, but it's some reason I'm taunting when I want to strike and striking when I want to taunt. Ooh. Oh, that was automatic, me just throwing him in there. That's kind of cool. The, the step over the top is something actually I, as a pro wrestler, was able to do myself, even though I'm barely six feet tall, um, I'm very flexible, so I could step over. Oh. Nice thing about the the tombstone is, a, besides it going right into the pin, is that it kind of 
auto moves you and your opponents so you're not going to get a rope break every time, which is helpful. It wouldn't be that cool if you had to rope break every pinfall attempt. Santino is a talented superstar, but it's hard to ever bet against the Undertaker. Hmm. Now, there's no Undertaker music here. I had actually gone in and turned off entrance music uh, just to try something unique, and <laughs> it's it's a little bit funky when uh, the Undertaker is posing and the lights are dimmed for no sound. So, uh, yeah, I'll go put that back in. Now, you see that SmackDown logo there? That was something that I, you know, when I was thinking of ideas for this mode, I was like, you know, after every programming, they put the little copyright logo at the end. So can we do that? And, you know, I think we asked WWE and they were happy to provide that for us. And uh, I'm pretty sure ever since in, in the WWE games, they've had the, you know, WWE HD or brand logo or whatever it is in there. I'm sure they would have done that had I not been there. But, you know, I, I'd like to think I was the first one to come up with that and kind of see it through. So now on Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona is a place where I originally, after I left Game Informer magazine, I, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting combo. Boy, uh, <laughs> and and I wrote Coach to be kind of uh, a jerk, but he just comes off sounding a little bit forced. But Phoenix, Arizona, I had originally signed. Or, well, let's watch this cutscene sure first. Sure, took a beating last week. You all right? <laughs> oh, I'm just a great. Don't drop I'm his sure WWE branded water. Come on. Undertaker does the same thing to you tonight. I doubt it. I got the dead man's number. I bet you won't last as long as I did against him. Yeah, keep walking, Undertaker. <laughs> I'll be seeing you later. <laughs> Good reactions by all three of the actors in there. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, I had applied to an interview to work with Rainbow Studios. And Rainbow Studios, so let's go back, change this music, put it back in. Rainbow Studios made MX games and some other games really known for the physics and they were going to make a WWE game and uh, I didn't end up working for them defeat tonight's opponent in less time than it took to beat Santino okay I kind of beat him kind of fast so that might be a little tough but uh, luckily I didn't accept that job with Rainbow as good of a company as they are because they never went on to make any WWE games and that's kind of what they were looking for me to help them do win in less than two minutes and nine seconds for a bonus. And there's a nice little timer there in, in Irish green. You know, little things like that. Man, Ukes was so accommodating to kind of get those things out. I think they were excited to see some some little, little changes to the formula themselves, so they were motivated to go and implement those, and something like this didn't, didn't take a lot of time for them. Now, it's really interesting playing as Undertaker after playing as Jericho because he's just so big. He just takes up so much of the ring. All right, maybe we can maybe we can beat him super fast right here. Uh, not quite. But he just takes up so much of the ring as opposed to Jericho, so it's... it's and he's a lot slower as well. I think this game did a really good job of differentiating the superstars and what it was like to play them. You know, it wasn't, uh, say, a difference between playing as Dulcim or E Honda in Street Fighter. Let's see if we can put him away here. But it, it, everybody definitely did have their own little, little characteristics, especially when you get in those kind of the kip up of, of HBK or the the lock pick thing that lets you break out of submission holds immediately. Alright, we have 40 seconds to spare. That's a tight little minute and a half TV match. There's that mustache. Almost like a Joey Ryan mustache. 
The Undertaker is looking more dominant than I've ever seen him before. And that's saying something. So again, this is just uh, a normal kind of exhibition match win cutscene animation so it doesn't change anything uh, as far as what my resources were to deal with uh, we threw a little bit of extra commentary and I guess with this story I'm not going too big on commentary after the match alright and we unlocked Hornswoggle as a non-playable manager now I wonder if I have to go in and tweak that in some way uh, maybe I'll try and do that at some point. Hold R1 and taunt. Now, I don't think it was for this game. I think it was for 2010 that actually Hornswoggle came in and did motion capture with us, and I directed him a little bit. I don't know if he was in a cutscene or if it was just for kind of more gameplay type stuff, but uh, yeah, he's a guy that he came up in Green Bay. He knew Ken Anderson. Um, he came up around the same time that I was coming up in Minnesota, so we had some things in common, but I had never met him before that. But, uh, nice dude. No, I had met him before that, that's right. When me and him and Ken Anderson and Chris Benoit went to go see Jackass 2 in L.A., if you can believe that or not. We went to a movie theater. I think I met Regal and Kendrick for the first time there as well. But, uh, yeah, like, that was six months before all that Benoit stuff happened. All right, we're throwing throwing Great Kali in here. A historical champion that he is. So I talk about Undertaker being large in this ring. Uh, him and Kali going together is going to be quite a, quite a lot of uh, humanity inside that ring, as big as the WWE ring is. And it is a big ring. I think it might be a 20-foot ring, maybe even a 22-foot ring. What a main event. And when I was doing indie shows, our rings were normally eight, uh, 16 feet, so it's, a, it's way bigger. Alright, why don't I just hold on to this, since I got a rope break, I'll ignore that. I've got till five. A striking elbow staggering the opponent. Kali looking pretty jacked with his karate pants to hide his stick legs. He's climbing the turnbuckle. Will this pay off? Oof. Almost a kind of a dusty elbow there. Two. Three. Come on, nothing flashing. Anybody ever notice that Seth Rollins has that kind of same protruding jaw that Great Kali does and a lot of other Really big dudes with Marfans. Almost like he's got like mini Marfan syndrome. Look at this. No fear on the face of this superstar. Yeah, get in here, Kali. Get your medicine. The kick connects. Here's the reversal. And there's the elbow. So kind of interesting that I decide to give us a world championship match. Uh, the third week of programming, but you know, hey, Undertaker's uh, always a perennial title contender. The fans are behind me. The announcers seem to be behind me. Yeah, all right, I don't want to hold it on this long. His body is in yellow, but uh... oh, I missed my chance to. Bank that finisher. Oh well. Ooh, and him with a reverse, kind of an Undertaker esque running DDT there. Man, he's large. Oh, what a vicious jab with the right. My buddy Davari was his manager for a long time, but I never really did talk to Sean about what it was like to work with him so much. Of course, Sean was also Mark Henry's manager, who's another very large man. All right, let's let's take him out. Let's see what we got here. Oof! All right, this would break a ring. There's the suplex. Not even much of a reaction from the audience, and he got up quicker than me. My goodness! That's a stiff kick. What a counter! The question has to be brought up: Will the Undertaker go into the Royal Rumble with a coveted world title around his waist? 
Good, good question, Cole. Right, okay, so I can do the, uh, what's this called, the Demon's Gate? Oh, and a run in by Santino. Whether you like it or not, there's the match right there. That little gnat. G N A T. Not to be confused with like a uh, natty nightheart. How dare you mess up my title match? Eat some turnbuckle pie. Ah, uh. Ooh, that was a big move. What are you mad at me for? Yeah. Take it out on Santino. You jerk. Two guys aren't enough to take out the Phenom. There you go. He's a great colleague. Big man over the top. <laughs> Not a good idea. Santino does a lot of dumb things. Some good good hooks, uppercuts to the ribs. And a nice no sell there. Can't no sell that. The numbers Oof. game is finally caught up with the Phenom. We need some officials out here. So unbelievably, those two laid out Undertaker, whose hair looks like a pre-patch WWE 2K20 female wrestler model. Yeah, look at Taker stewing in the locker room. Now he's going to be stewing in the airplane. He's too upset to even play Mario Kart on his Switch. What was the what was the portable game system back then? If you're playing the PSP, yeah. Playing a little burnout on your PSP? You know what I loved on my PSP was Metal Gear Acid 2. It was not a Kojima game, but it was it was like a turn-based uh, me Metal Gear game with cards. The first one was not that great, but the second one was, was super fun. I beat it, and then I went ahead and replayed it and beat it again, like, immediately after. Alright, we're in Little Rock, Arkansas. Little Rock, a place that I don't know that I've ever been. Uh, even when I toured the U.S. and Canada with Guar, I don't think I went to Little Rock. All right, so now we're going to see a little bit about uh, Finley and Santino's plans here. An unlikely pair. We are sick and tired of being pushed around on SmackDown. How are we supposed to get ahead in the WWE with freaks of nature like The Undertaker bulldozing everyone? No, he makes a good point. But we're not worried. We aren't intimidated. We know The Undertaker's WrestleMania See, that's the angry Finley then that everybody likes. The man is coming. You're old news, Undertaker. We're the new school. But it's not all bad. The man has a present for you, dead man. So the man. This is another kind of who is it sort of storyline. A little bit like the Jericho one. Be careful what you wish for. The Taker's not playing. He gets speared by Edge. So I think one of the things that WWE told me was we were not supposed to call him The Undertaker. We were supposed to call him Undertaker. And there it said on the captions, The, Under the Undertaker. But uh, I think I tried to remove that whenever possible. However, there were still a lot of people who in voiceover would call him The Undertaker. Now, Edge, as you probably remember, was uh, one of the guys that Undertaker took on during his WrestleMania streak. What a counter. Santino with Finley now so that's kind of the reason why we have him in there now. Of course, Edge was uh, on-air talent at that time, so it's not that big of a surprise. And the knuckles connect. And I read on some, I read on Twitter that Edge might be coming back to be in the ring. Uh, that was kind of surprising to me. I mean, he had neck issues, and you know, Edge was never 
a very large man. I mean, he's a tall guy, but he's really wiry. And I think whenever he was in big size, it was kind of with some medicinal help. And that was quick. I do like that rated R tights, though. The kind of monochrome look is pretty cool. So that presence didn't uh, do a whole lot for me, Mr. The Man. There's that tongue out. I did not model that tongue, even though my tongue is about that size. There's a scene I did in Death Stranding where the character I was playing, Higgs, licks the face of another character. And, uh... I talked to the animator later, and he was like, Man, I wish we... I wish our model had as long of a tongue as yours. It would have made it a whole lot easier for us. But, of course, they had to deal with the tongue length of their in-game model for Higgs. Who I imagine was based on the tongue size of Troy Baker, who did the voice and did, um some of the other motion capture for that character. Alright, so we are going into Royal Rumble. Uh, this has been a really quick first act of this storyline, but we don't necessarily have a Royal, Royal Rumble match yet. So let's see what the Booker Man has in store for us. And the Booker Man is not Booker T, and he's not the man. He's just the guy who books our matches. Didn't, didn't Brian Pillman in WCW call Kevin Sullivan Booker Man live on TV once when uh, Kevin Sullivan was actually doing some booking there? That was kind of part of uh, Brian Pillman's un unpredictable gimmick that he carried on and uh, for the rest of his career. Okay, so we got a handicap match against New School. Well, that makes sense. It's a one on tag, so they're, I'm not even gonna have to take them all, both on one at a time. Hmm. All right, here's a special entrance for New School. And they're packing the urn. <laughs> very close-up shot of Undertaker not looking very impressed, but a little a little curious. It is rather shiny. They shined it up real nice. I wonder if they're going to turn it sideways and stick it up. Oh, never mind. So they are definitely plotting some stuff. I mean, they're not... Again, you know, I, I beat the crap out of them pretty easily in the first two weeks, but uh, they laid me out as well, so them together may be a lot... You know, the whole may be better than the sum of its parts. But maybe I can take them out real quick. A stiff shot with the elbow. What an impact from the knee. Finley not sure which side he wants to be on there. Here comes the body splash. Big splash. I took a big splash like that in my very first match trained, and I, I bumped so hard I hit the back of my head There's on the, the turnbuckle pole behind, and that did not feel good. All right, you want to tag out, Santino? Go ahead. No oh, he doesn't want to tag yet. Okay. More punishment for you, I guess. Ooh. Nice arm drag counter oh and a word. headbutt. A Santino head with a lot of head-based offense. Away, right and I'm going to drive his head through the canvas right now. Right in front of Corey Ledesma and Brian Williams, who's not paying attention. Pay attention, Brian. Pay attention, Brian. No, I won't let him. That was me undoing the pin right there. Now maybe he'll tag out. Because school is not over yet for new school. Devastating. Just a devastating neck breaker. Look at Undertaker just kind of stalking. Now that's a smooth animation oh, right there. Slam. It's kind of amazing just how good the these look. And you, you figure that they have to be done 
by any size range of guys to any other size range of guys. What a nasty elbow. And that's a stiff kick. All right, it's time for you to get a tombstone. Look at this. This could be it. The tombstone pilot. Oh, not, not a lot of sound effect there and not... Uh, well, There's the cover. One, thanks for coming. Two. He almost got the three right there. Hmm. Oh, the punch connects. Bam. There's the close line. Now you get out of here, that Santino. I want to pin Finley. That's a difference maker. All right. Lane Maybe that's it. Simple. No, he's getting up pretty quick. Fair enough, let's hit him with that cool and there's a side slam again. Slam. He can get the pin right here. That's a simple move, but if you roll, big kick out. That kick out reminds me of when I was wrestling oh, Sean Davari. It was actually me and Austin Aries against Sean Davari and Big Daddy Hook for another another guy from our, our camp, our group. And I hit Sean with a pretty big springboard drop kick. And he told me when I pinned him, he said, you stiff me like that again, I'm going to beat your ass. And he kicked that? out like that strong. They like that Finley level of what kick out power. What a counter. Now, he and I are and really close and, uh, you know, we were... He gave me a receipt later and it was fine, but uh, it was just funny just how mad he got and how big he kicked out of that move. Reverse it. Now these guys are actually hanging in a lot longer than I thought they would. Dear Lord, those lariats can do so much damage. What a vicious shot with the knee. I think and he's, he's gonna fly. His damage is not. Oh, 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 wait. Ah, a little slow there. Look at, I'm in all orange. I'll kip up though. Come on, let me get you a finisher. Let me get you a finisher. Finisher, finisher, finisher. Nice oh. Reversal. These guys are not going down easily. Oh, he's going to get me in a submission. That's going to run out my finisher timer. Submission hole locked in. Oh, I got lock pick. Right okay. Bank it, bank it, bank it. No, too late. Oh, man. What a crushing blow. A vicious elbow drop delivered with a lot of force. Now I'm getting mad. Now I'm getting mad at this new school. They're not, uh, they're not going down as easily as I thought they would. A vicious blow to the opponent. A stiff but shot Sant to the elbow. Yeah, Santino's really not that hurt. Look at he's, he's just orange in the head, and that's it. Move out of the way, ref. Driving the knee into the opponent. Alright, get up. You're done, he's son. Going in for the kill. Kind of strange that in these Tag type matches, it doesn't do the camera cut on the finisher. And now his head's red. This should be it. Oh, yeah. Finley's not going to let that happen easily. Get out. Alright, that should do it. Okay. You know, that, that was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but. That is the match. Even a weakened Undertaker is still very dangerous. Ah, you're a little late getting there, the uh, Santino. The Ooh, good sound effect, though. And they're putting the boots to the Undertaker. One earn shot, is that it? However, you can see the, so maybe that's why he was a little more difficult to see, because the, the appearance of the urn made Undertaker a little weaker. Mm -hmm -hmm. Interesting, is it not? I hope it is, because that is the end of Act 1 for The Undertaker's Road to WrestleMania. Thanks for tuning in. Please continue to thumb me in the eye. Please continue to stay subscribed and watch these as they come. And I really appreciate you watching and you commenting and all that other stuff. So I will see you again. This has been Justin.
please subscribe. <laughs> and Tomoko. And uh, yeah, thanks. See you again. Bye.